piece. Jerry. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we really have a fairly limited agenda today, but um, the big one is the discussion about the, the eye tables, and we got a subsequent um, memorandum email that I don't know if you've all received from staff. Yeah, mine's that, not in color. Well, I printed mine at home, and you can tell well, my ink cartridges are they've weird. Got <laughs> they've got a copy here. You're talking about this one? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. called Issue 4.14 4 and 5.8. All right, if you remember, um, Jerry had proposed some interim language to put on hold um, some of the potential eye changes in a specific geographic area. And we, I'd, I'd looked, I'd, I'd actually had a similar discussion with Mr. Potter who had a suggestion that was a little bit different. And when we left, we heard that you two were going to talk. So I don't know if you had the opportunity to do that. In the interim too, I've been talking to some people and um, I'm, I'm comfortable with the, the interim provision, but my sense is it should not be 100, it should be 64th, which would include the issue from Mr. Mintz about the warehouse. But uh, Jerry or Tim, do you want to chime in on any conversations or recommendations? Tom and I have had pretty good Oh, you and Tom, not you and Jerry, and, sorry. And, and I don't know if you received my email or. I did very late last night, okay. but it was sort of terse, so I, if you could amplify, that would be helpful. Well, I'm going to let Bob deal with, with his issue, and what I did is, after speaking to Tom a little bit, to number one, understand the, the whole package that he was proposing. Went ahead and hit up some measurements of what that would really mean to try and find some clarity in the whole deal. And first of all, when I didn't quite understand why why the notion was Here's to stop part. at 100. Here's some extra. So I suggested that a couple things with Tom that you know, when I had spoken earlier that there there is a specific user that is looking at the piece of property along C Street, the east side of it that is uh, looking at a mixture of uses which include commercial and office um, or in kind of a headquarters facility. And in doing that, um, I, I went ahead and made an Exhibit 3A, which is a little bit different than what uh, I had handed out, just a tiny bit different, and suggested that the front end along C Street is probably more aesthetic and better used as commercial rather than heavy industrial along C Street. And I think all you have to do is drive along um, C Street north of this location and look at how wonderful that heavy industrial looks in a primary uh, commuter corridor. So I've suggested that the, the approximate 1,000 foot um, area that was indicated by Tom and his write-up and Barry um, was fine with the exception that I actually put real dimensions on here to show that in a future, and what I'm worried about is future interpretation of the thousand foot, that if you look at the target site alone, south of 100, it's um, about 1150 feet. So the back 150 feet of the site would fall outside of that. And if it needs more definition if in fact it's any parcel that is partially or wholly within that thousand feet is is in the exempted area that's probably workable but I didn't want to run into a future interpretation that something is uh, partially outside of that thousand feet so therefore is kind of a split lot zoning situation Okay. But to the north, I really felt that a better utilization of the property when you have commercial there with Target and the upgrades that they've done there and the type of traffic that they will be bringing into the area 
to have heavy industrial directly across the street without adequate buffering or anything would be that great. So effectively everything from the front of the parallel to the front of the target building west and going up C Street would then be uh, in that commercial exemption. Okay. But I thought it would be helpful if everybody had dimensions Thank so you, you knew what a thousand feet really was and what was really out there. Thank you. Tom and Jerry? I think if we if we could separate Bob's issue out here, we, we really don't want to take this issue all the way up to 64th. We, you know, if we can stay in this picker area, uh, we probably can um, live with uh, Tim's suggestion. That doesn't necessarily say we're going to agree with that property north of 100 to be. I'm sorry, where is 64th in, on this map? Does it show it it's, even? No, it's, it's good, a good bit further. Okay. All right. Um, it, I thought we had resolved Bob's issue on his uh, property up there. So. Well, I, I had a little bit of an email interchange with Bob, and so I don't know. But my understanding is you ha we have it. Bob? No. Um, what, Jerry, what did you think the resolution was? Well, Tom, what was the, the issue with this property? Well, uh, as I understand it, Bob's property is a, is a, an office building. It's mm -hmm. three stories, and it's an existing use. If uh, that type of use were to become uh, non-conforming in any way, or uh, the limitations on office uses in the I-2 district are somehow more, more limiting than what that existing building has, they could be faced with a situation where for example, if they want to uh, change uses, let's say they get a lease from uh, the government and they actually have a change of use, it goes to the muni, because it's non-conforming, uh, that could be a problem. Or perhaps they even have, want to say they have a, another commercial office use. It isn't even itself a change of use. And in order to accommodate it, let's say they want to add an elevator or a new atrium or something. Well, let's, let's get it clear here, clear here. This is the warehouse. This is your distribution center. You have this is an office building. An office building, a standalone office building on I-1 one, one property. And it's office. two buildings. One is a two-story, one is a three-story. Well, if we make I-1, if we make office legal in I-1, that takes care of your issue, doesn't it? All right, so there's another alternative to go when we get in the tables, right? Staff, you generally. Well, we can live with this this map that Mr. Potter provided. It still doesn't, you know, we 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 haven't made any decisions on what zoning should be there. Uh, but no, it, it does allow them to continue with the existing uh, uses that allow them the district today until those decisions are made and uh, final change by the assembly through a rezoning process. And that would be triggered with the land use map discussion. Land occurred. use map or this 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 or analysis study, study of the show or whatever. Okay, Jim. I think there should be a two-year tail on the adoption of the land use map so that we don't know. None of us know when that land use map is coming, and somebody could be developing something, and there should be an opportunity, a limited opportunity after the adoption of the of it to allow this to continue for two years so that it could be you know, proceed with what you were planning at the time of this I understand. It's it's that old difficulty I think that government bodies always have is you can't obligate a future body on decisions, though you could certainly indicate it's we could certainly indicate it's our intent that that occurs. But when a land use map occurs or the special study well, occurs, things could one, change. Now twenty one the current discussion is that there be a two year overlap between existing and true. And so yeah. I'm just asking for something similar here. But, and Chair, we can live with this graphic and with, okay. the, with the narrative language that we submitted. All right. <coughs> Any discussion from the committee about this? Any opposition from the committee with it? Okay, we'll go with that. Okay. And then, Debbie, one of the other things that I had talked to Tom about were a couple of the uses under the section three. Yeah, I would, I'd like to hit the uses next, so go ahead. Okay, part of the, part of the confusion, because I went through this a few times to try and figure out just exactly how it would cascade in implementation. Yeah. And, uh, 
and it took me several times to figure out exactly what the staff was trying to do. And it's here, but I, I don't know that it's clear enough. I think there should be some clarifying language that okay. explains how each of these one, two, and three segments would come into play. Could you amplify that? I mean, I, I got from the email that you thought it was confusing. What it specifically is confusing? I just want to make sure that when, when <coughs> people look at this, that they understand that there's the first interim, and that's dealing with just this small nodal area in South Anchorage. And that number two is that that's going to be um, a second interim provision, and, and that is for some time that the table will be used um, and, and there'll be some mitigation for some period of time until the land use plan map is done. And then lastly is, is number three, A, B, and C. You get into actually modifying that table that's going to be referenced. So um, okay. it, it was a little bit clearer about exactly which properties, and inclusive or non-inclusive, would be covered in each one of these. And part of the question came up when I got to 3B and saw that the recommendation was to take the Oceander Johnston matrix and modify it so that offices were a prohibited use. Yeah, hold on that. We're not done with the table yet. But just talking about the a, B, C, or the one, two, three steps. I guess I, I thought it was clearer than, than he think, but he uses it all the time. So his uncertainty is important to address. Tom? Right, so uh, as you implement, this would be uh, the first two items there on the first page, basically, um, exempt the first one is focused on the uh, C Street corridor area South Anchorage and it it basically states that until you have an adopted land use plan map the allowed uses in that area operate under the current pre-existing title 21 which is basically uh, understood yeah the second provision uh, applies to areas that uh, Ri2, and and that in general, not just that area, but our I2 areas, and the I2 being more restrictive in the table towards commercial, in the uh, Title One rewrite table towards commercial than I1. So this second interim provision uh, for the areas outside of this C Street South Anchorage node that are zoned I2 would also to an extent have interim relief and in that regardless of what the use table shows in terms of how limited commercial is in the I-2, for the, the period of time until the land use plan map is adopted, those properties would actually be uh, allowed to have the uses permitted in in the left-hand column in the I-1 district. And that's, that's the second interim provision. So those provisions, until the land use plan map is adopted, uh, trump what's in, in the uh, right-hand column in the table, which shows a more limited um, long-term intent for commercial use, commercial retail use in the I-2. So the item three, Basically, item three, we looked at the areas that uh, okay. are likely to remain I-2, and we used some maps. Okay, hold, hold on the detail on three. We're going to, we have to flesh out three a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, Tim, questions? And, and, maybe it's, and maybe it was just me and the way I was reading it. If everybody's clear on how it works, that's fine. That's how I understood it, but I don't have the specific background that you do so okay so generally if we go the one two three I think anybody have any problems with that okay let's talk about three a little bit more now when we left this there were some items that the committee wanted to change if you recall 
We took out the government administrative and civic buildings off I-1. We also took out the hospital health care facility and nursing facility out of I-1. And that's all my notes said we have done to this point. But I wanted to ask if there was anything else in the table that people wanted to discuss. I know Jennifer called me and she definitely wanted to deal with the asterisk situation. <laughs> but before we get into that, Erica has a comment. I just wanted to clarify that you had also removed pawn shop from the I one and I. They took the pawn shop out of there, maybe. Oh, I can't find pawn shop. Maybe second, that's what I took. Second, second page. page. That's right. I didn't I didn't turn the page. Thank you. Yes, we removed pawn shop. Right. Okay. Has anybody had an opportunity to look at this further? Now, uh, you might also look at it in conjunction with staff's recommendations on page two of the memorandum. The big thing from Jennifer was the asterisk. So if nobody else has any comments, maybe we should deal with that first. Um, she specifically asked me to try to, basically she said, please remove the asterisks because she didn't see the value of them. Um, and based on my conversation, the asterisks generally, my understanding is the asterisks generally mean if that use is of a certain size or a certain category, then it qualifies, but otherwise it doesn't. So you're basically fine tuning, for instance, the financial institution. So only certain financial institutions are permitted. Only certain offices are permitted. Correct? In general, correct. Okay. All right. Um, I'm particularly with the office business and, and professional. That's what I've gotten the most feedback on in opposition. So I am struggling with, I, well, I guess my position is I'd like to get rid of, particularly in regard to the office business and professional, the asterisks. But is there any conversation or concern or do you want to say anything, Tom? We would, and, and, uh, and I'd like to show you the, the rationale behind some kind of limitations in, uh, for office in the I-2. Okay. And, and I'll have to direct your attention to it now, because uh, this is somewhat geographic. Uh, we this, can share. Yeah. So we have limited copies, but um, if I could hand out a copy here out a couple of the books at the edge. So the area that uh, is highlighted in yellow with Can lines, give him you know, the, the, the map just previous to that showing central anchorage um, is also uh, illustrative. Hey, Ernie, would you scoot over one so the three of us can share a map? I would just love to move over next to you. Oh, Jerry and I can share too. Okay. Actually, this way Dick can see it too. Um, so what we're trying to de depict here is the general um, situation that once the, the land use plan map is adopted and this table for I-2 is in effect, that the areas shown in the yellow uh, hatch line are areas currently zoned industrial, uh, in addition to that South Street commercial node, areas currently zoned industrial that are the kinds of areas that were, are likely to be redesignated to a commercial or non-industrial I-2, I-1 use. And the previous map shows a lot of additional areas. And so what that told, tells us are two things. First, it tells us where um, in the blue, the dark blue, the remaining I-2 is most likely to remain after we have implemented the land use plan map. The second thing it tells us is that we're going to have a more limited land base for industrial than today, and it'll be more appropriately located than today, because many of the areas currently zoned industrial in those yellow areas are areas that are already given over towards uh, commercial retail, like Cars, Abbott here is zoned that way, and if I, 
And there are areas further north on sea that are the, the hotel rows south of Tudor. That's also given over. So given those, those two facts, um, and given that we, we, we know we want to have a district that works best for industrial uses, where industrial uses have uh, the space in the area to, 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 to operate, the owner operators, like Alaska countertops just north of, you know, on 92nd there in the blue area. They can be loud, they can be noisy, and they have like uses around them. And, and those, those, there's a place for that in our economy where we have those owner-operated industrial service fabrication facilities. So given those facts, and given the policies and the plan and the other information we have, we believe it's most prudent in, to have some limitation to certain key commercial, retail, commercial office uses in the I-2, in those remaining areas, given what's likely to be left and where that's located. Uh, what we have in, in this issue response in 5A, we have more copies over that, is, a, is an explanation and discussion about the office limitation. And the office limitation um, the wording could be adjusted, it could be you know, made more flexible, but the, the basic idea is that in the I-2 district, the office uses are, are limited in scale and are compatible with an I-2 industrial area, and that those office uses that are uh, more financial or commercial or commercial employment, commercial center oriented, uh, are in the commercial centers of town and not in the I-2. And, and that's the basic idea behind those limitations. Uh, they're in uh, the draft code, as you have um, in the blue line version in strike through. But they're uh, a revised, more flexible version is here in issue response 5A. And we can just, we're open to suggestions about how to make that even more workable. Uh, but that, that's the basic idea behind limitations to certain key commercial uses that are most uh, that are most geared towards creating commercial centers or building them up and those are the commercial office and financial centers um, the big box retail stores and uh, the general grocery retailers okay all right comments uh, Erica Bridget. I'd like to add that when you do see um, attractive new retail and office uses go into a district like the I2, uh, exactly like the target situation, you then see pressure for the neighboring lots to move out of I-2 because they don't want to have the industrial next to them. They want something nicer, they want something more compatible. And so that just leads to more and more pressure to rezone the, I the neighboring I-2 into a different zoning district to keep the heavy industrial away from them. And it, it's, a, it's a pattern of using more and more and more of our heavy industrial land. Jim? This is a major change, and we need some time to study this. Well, it, it just, I mean, it's just, it's not going to be anything, we're, this is nothing we're adopting. This is yeah, just... but, it, but it, it leads to what what is accepted and what isn't accepted, and, and... Well, I don't think it you should consider it that way, because the Assembly hasn't done a land use map. This is <clears throat> what staff is envisioning. It, it would have to go through quite a few steps before this became reality. And, and to clarify where the information comes from, it is the information we've been using with the, the conceptually approved Anchorage Bull Land Use Plan Map, which was set aside to help as a technical reference to help evaluate the Title One rewrite zoning districts. And, and there it sat for a while, and it's, uh, although some of the yellow would change. What it was doing is just really recognizing a lot of the developments that have taken place that have been developed commercially, like Hotel Row on C Street and other areas that have developed commercially industrial areas. But they were trying to limit the uh, commercialization of the I-2 properties in the future. C and Minnesota Corner is a key example. The industrial users there don't want the uh, uh, target okay. facility there. Utilhoven to the south 
I'm very adamant that you know they want the industrial uses preserved. All right. I, I, I understand. I, I have to repeat though, when our committee, the Assembly Title Twenty One Committee, looked at the land use map, we absolutely did not put it forward to be provisionally adopted. We thought it was problematic. We thought it was extremely controversial. We did bring it on a trial basis for a public hearing, and we got a whole lot of specific property complaints, and so we put it aside. So I understand you've been using it for guidance, but it has never been blessed by the assembly. And so, uh, just cautionary folks, I keep saying that, I, and I know it drives you guys crazy, I, I but was just this is a the, big deal. That we know it went to the PNZ. I, I don't, I asked staff, you know, after a previous discussion of the controversies that were brought forward because I had and wasn't aware of them. And to my knowledge, this did not go to, to the hearing. Well, I specifically remember Sean Debenham coming up and talking at length about specific properties. So, in, I mean, my memory is not wonderful, but I have some very vivid pictures in my mind. Yeah, I, think, I think that the, I think the, yes, key, the key for us in the yellow is, you know, for example, I think the yellow is just recognizing a lot of reality. So whatever land use plan map is adopted, uh, we know cars and Abbott is not I-2, and it's likely to be redesignated. Okay. And so the yellow, a lot of that is just recognizing reality of the land use map. All right, but... <clears throat> I am. We can't. We can't base decisions based on this, folks. I'm sorry. We just can't. Cheryl. The, the trick is, I think staff's been very creative with this. With I the think bonds. they have. Yes, they because have. Because what's happening is a major key tool of Bankway 2020 is about to be destroyed, and that is grouping the commercial areas together and starting to concentrate them, and with the working table. Historic working table, John's an old standard version, you're, you're stripping that tool. But it's a great way for staff to try to explain that they're not killing every commercial opportunity in town. They're just simply trying to move towards limiting where okay. commercial will go. Thank you. So I understand you won't be voting on this anytime soon, but I, I think it nicely illustrates that there's very little loss. Going okay. On. Thank you. All right. At this point, then, um, I'm going to ask, I, I still think we should get rid of the asterisk. Oh, Jim? One question. Could this be put on the website or something? Because there's limited copies around here. There's going to be three of us fighting for one copy here, and, and I'm going to lose over here at the corner. So, um. Jim, I, I have to tell you that it's premature to worry about this. I want to try to underline that point and repeat it. We are not about to deal with a land use map in the near future. It's coming, but it's not coming within the next, in 2012. How's that? Two so, months. well, it, it's probably not coming during my tenure, but it may, I guess, in the spring. I think that, you know, the, the, the land use plan map draft will be changed, but the main thing we're trying to illustrate is that the area designated as industrial will shrink and be more appropriately located in whatever land use plan map the city adopts. Uh, just the reality okay, of what's I hear that, and I, and I agree with that. All right, let's go back to this, because this is something we have to make a decision on, folks. Okay. Is there object, Dick? Tom, your position on the asterisk in English? In English? Uh, they want to keep it. Well, first of all, the asterisk there, uh, whether they, they the stay or go, uh, the asterisks themselves are only referring to actual language elsewhere. And, and for the office use, our discussion about office and, and the recommendation about what limitations should be are actually in your issue response 5-8. Uh, and we now, really hold on. I maybe don't have that. I have this in front of me. <coughs> so, I can pull that. It's on pages 16 and 17 of this document. Thanks. Thank you. So, the idea is, is to, you know, 
when we have a new credit union one headquarters or a new center point tower that they that they are located relative to our transit transportation other commercial uses and commercial centers where we want to bolster uh, that they are avoiding uh, moving into Alaska countertops territory okay could you wait a minute I I, this isn't quite how I under what I understood the asterisk to mean. Is this inclusive of all of the asterisk reference language, or is there something I'm missing somewhere? Th this is what the asterisk. This is totally to. it. That's it. Okay, it's a. And I and I probably should not have put those asterisks on there like that. Well, I totally I misunderstood. I think, or I didn't have a complete understanding of asterisk. Uh, Erica's that correcting. Asterisk is about the office. That language isn't for every asterisk table, correct? Uh, correct. Yeah, it's specific to that use. So there's a different limitation on the lobby. <sighs> All right, I'm not totally prepared then. I thought I was, and I'm not, because I haven't read what every different asterisk means. And I, and I, yeah, I should probably point you all to exactly where those limitations are. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So. But let's deal with this one first, okay. all right? Mm -hmm. Comment. Bob, do you have any comment? Yes. Um, the asterisk limitation that limits office use to offices that directly serve the function of the industrial use is very limited. So you can't have any office use on I-1 or I-2 that isn't related to an industrial use on the same property. And secondly, the limitation on the gross floor area of the office is too small even if it was related had limited to related to the industrial use and the off example I'll give you is the JBG building you know we had a 30,000 square foot office building serving um, the administrative functions of a five acre warehouse um, so both the limitation in use and the limitation in size are inappropriate and also if you look at all of the blue and purple area on this, what you're saying is every office in any blue or purple area becomes a non-conforming use. So I think that you've got to give offices some place to go here, and I would suggest that would be in the I-1. We'd, we'd agree with Bob in the sense that there are uh, existing office buildings and office uses that were developed, invested in, without anticipating becoming non-conforming. And what we'd suggest um, uh, it would be to apply this type of limitation only to new office building construction going forward from the effective date. Well, that's still grandfather's. And then uh, I mean, it does former not. offices would be considered conforming and could continue to expand or, or operate change use as though they are completely conforming. So we'd uses. have a specific exemption for offices in Chapter 12? So they don't have to move towards conformity? Uh, it could be placed simply in this first line here, uh, new, it would simply refer to new office building construction in the I-1 and I-2 districts. It would be taken care of right there. And that would allow the existing ones to continue to stay there? Uh, it would also make them basically conform conforming. Yeah. And expandable. Comments? Tim? Um, I did. I, I still... I'd feel a lot more comfortable if I'd had time to go ahead and, and do some actual case studies of, of some different facilities uh, and look at it. I don't necessarily have a problem that's being proposed. Uh, I totally get the issue of trying to reserve the I-2 for I-2 uses. Um, I'm, not, I'm not totally convinced how this all plays out with different types of projects. I have to tell you, there's I-2 elsewhere within the municipality and adjacent to the municipality that also exists, and so this I-2 isn't the only I-2 around. There's a significant amount in my district, and I think when the bridge is built, there'll be some significant amount over there, too. So I'm not necessarily 
we're not it's protective. Resolve, we're not going to resolve their problem. I know we're not, but it, it's allowed you, over there. If you have issues, Tim or Bob, be, between now and when this moves forward, the assembly, okay, well, bring it back. Uh, I think there's some significant issues with the recommendations listed on page 17. And the frustration I have is I'm not sure of specific language to deal with the frustrations <laughs> right now. And I am chagrined to admit that I thought I was prepared and I'm not because I had a different understanding of what you meant so on you your pushes past meeting. Oh gosh, I hate that's what you're saying, Debbie. I'm, I don't know what I'm saying at this point. I'm looking for straws to help pull me out of the hole. Um, I still, I guess, I understand your point, but I, I'm, it's, I'm struggling to find that it's important enough to do. I, I guess... I know, I, I keep saying this, and I have for years, my understanding is based on where I live and what I've lived, and my I-2 is pretty amorphous out in Chugiak Eagle River, and it's not ever been problematic to even have a little store next to a, gore, a quarry. So I'm, intellectually, I guess, I get it, but rationally and how we wor live in the world, I don't know if I get it. So my fallback is still to, I guess, get rid of the asterisk for office. Tim? I just wanted to ask Bob a little about his thoughts about, you know, we've got this concern about office buildings that are independent of anything related to the industrial going in the I-2 district. Right. And I guess I'm trying to figure out if there's, is there an example of where that's occurred? About the only independent office that seems almost out of place is uh, with Siri built down off of uh, C Street and Clat. JBG office. And that's, and that's B3. The JBG office now is an independent office because Safeway vacated it and we're losing it to third parties. But it, it's something that I almost think the marketplace is going to take care of. I, you know, I don't see any JLs or most of the clients that, that uh, Mr. Thompson works with. Yeah, I just don't see anybody going to I-2 and going, let's put a high-end office building in, in an industrial district that's purely industrial. Note the asterisks are for both I-1 and I-2 in the chart. Didn't the Credit Union 1 down in Abbott go into I-2 or I-1? It's I-1, I believe. Uh, yes, it's an I-1. You know, another option would be to... to, to pro provide some of these limitations specifically to I-2. Um, that, that doesn't mean that that area should have ever been industrial. If <laughs> <laughs> you want to get into the argument about the county centers and everything else, I think the credit union's office <laughs> building there is a group of <laughs> All right, well. And I guess off on the, on the Anchorage industrial part, you know, there were cattle companies and all that. That's industrial. And it's a combination of pure office, uh, and it's been around for 30 plus years. And it's got some industrial backdoor warehouse and business distribution stuff. And, you know, is that something where we'd be limiting the office size? No. Be taking care of the business industrial parks, they're uh, exempt. Well, that's if you do it as a as a PUD, basically. But what if you wanted to build that as a permitted use? In the long run, Anchorage needs one district tool that works best for industrial uses. Just one tool. Most every city has that tool. It's like Anchorage has a tool that works best for single-family homes, the R1, or, or institutional uses, the PLI, that keep the key retail commercial uses out. And Anchorage needs just one tool, okay. at least one. All right. that, and our only one is the I-2. And yeah, we're okay. trying everything we can to I deal understand. with these concerns. I understand. Well, I, I 
agree with Tim. I mean, the, the, the concern seems to be commercial encroachment into the industrial, and that we don't see people going and building office buildings in the industrial. So if it's not that big a problem, and you're going to create a lot of problems by prohibiting it, I think you should allow it. OK, let's, all right, I'm going to make, suggest, I can't make anything. I'm going to suggest a tentative solution. And I've got to reserve this because Jennifer has strong opinions on this and she's not here. But I'm going to suggest we remove the asterisk on I-1 and we leave the asterisk at I-2, at least for now, with the understanding that Jennifer may come back and say more about it. Would the committee object to that? I said we'll leave the asterisks on there. You want to leave both asterisks? Yes. Okay, then maybe we better stop. I'm going to have to hold this till Jennifer's here because I, I don't think we're going to get to consensus on it. Unless, Harriet, do you want to have a comment? Not yet. Okay, we're going to hold I want, I, the office one. <laughs> now, are you, I'm trying to think on your chart. You basically are more, it appears to be more amenable on the office then you wanted the financial institution prohibited completely in I-2. In I-2. And, but you have it permitted to a certain size in I-1. Correct. Uh, Any comment on that from anybody? The only question I okay. have is what is the definition of a financial institution? Eric is the definition person. Page 69 of the chapter 5. And, and the reason I bring that up is that as the different financial institutions grow, they end up with a, and Gordon can talk about this, that they end up with different functions where they are basically creating separate, almost warehouse like buildings that function with all their computer servers and everything else and those can clearly go into an industrial area so I just want to make sure that that we're looking at the type of use and the functions versus right. just something in a banking category because it's owned by First National Bank of Alaska right. it may actually be an industrial use. And, we, we've, and we've got your back there. <laughs> How to interpret that yeah, one. The solution. Well, um, go ahead then. It's a separate use type. It's it's a separate primary use type. It's on page happens to be on page seventy five. So if it if okay. it's a if it's a if it's a data or computer use, it would it would not be considered a a bank. Okay, if what's it's owned by a bank? What does this asterisk mean? Uh, this asterisk refers to page sixty nine of your blue line version, and it's referring to line thirty nine. Hold hold hold. Page 69. Um, and, and we have copies. Page 69, line what? 39. These are the use specific standards for financial. Planting beds. I'm sorry? You're on the wrong page. Page 69, 69 is planting beds. Of chapter 5, not 7. Oh, oh dear, this is not a good day. <laughs> You. Okay, got it. Thanks. Dick showed it to me. No problem. We have more copies. <clears throat> okay, the wording is financial institutions are per permitted in B1A, in, well, NNMU isn't relevant anymore, I1 and B3 districts only if they are providing primarily retail services to walk in customers rather than primarily office and support services with few walk in customers. Okay. So basically the bank, the bank branch, like Credit Union 1 in downtown, yeah. is fine, but the headquarters we want to see in those commercial centers, not in the, not in the industrial office. zones. That's okay. the idea behind it. Makes sense. Go ahead. For clarification, the last year says what they call their financial center on 36 is not a financial institution based on your definition because it doesn't have a retail bank. So I think if you add or in there, rather than always include retail bank. And or? Yeah. Okay. Then you would include building plus. Is there any objection to that? Thanks. 
Okay. Thomas, we have to take the B3 out of this. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to. <laughs> B3 is obviously taking the place of the mixed use districts, so the B3 would, and the NMU would go away. Uh, this limitation would apply only in the B1A and the I1. Possibly the B1B, depending on what uses are allowed there today. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so basically, if we're comfortable with the asterisk, which maybe we are with that and or thing, then the staff would like to get rid of the major site plan review on the chart for I2. Is there any problem, any objection? What do you guys think? Let's get it out of here. So your handwritten... Um, well, they're suggesting get rid of the M. Mm -hmm. And, and I2. put what in there? Mm -hmm. Prohibited. It would be blank. Okay. Then. It would be blank. But I don't know if there's any discussion on that. Is that problematic, to anybody? Would it go blank if it goes blank? That's what they want. Out. That's right. That's what they want. They want it prohibited. Not there too. Right? And I too. They want it prohibited. Right now, what Jennifer and I had suggested is it could be allowed with a major site plan review, and I'd be comfortable putting in that asterisk after the M, but. Um, the asterisk with being the limitation on retail. Jim? We want, the, we want we want the ability to put it there. Okay. So if it's a, this data center deal, why is that problematic in I2? It seems like it would fit. Data center is another category. Well, I'm sorry. It's on page 75. It's a use type called data processing. I, okay, facility. I got it. I misspoke. It would be allowed. Yeah. I've been regularly misspeaking this morning. My apologies. But we have a lot of mixed, a lot of mixes where you'll have a branch bank with data, data process. Right, and and so you would, if you had a bank, a, a branch bank that un, under a recommendation that would go in like the I one or B three, and the areas that will remain I two in the long run are areas where we don't expect to see, don't really want to see, the retail banking. Okay, I would rather than an outright prohibition change the M to a C, which means it's a higher burden, public hearing, they'd have to go through specific approval processes, but committee? You're looking at me blankly. <laughs> why, why are we trying to get audited? I would rather. Too? We're talking about financial institutions yeah, now, Cheryl. Financial, like banks. Well, my bank, my main concern is, and it has been from the very beginning, is the issue of takings and the issue of depriving a private property owner who thought they had the ability to develop and have for a long time, and now we're taking that uh, that away from them. That's been ever since Mr. Bonas did that first work session. That's been my background baggage as I've looked at this. And so I initially, frankly, bought into the industrial needs assessment document that we did. But since then, I've been talking to a whole lot of people about it. And I personally believe that the industrial needs assessment that we did was not thorough enough and inadequate. It didn't address railroad properties. It didn't address uh, including the holdings, which in my district are enormous. It didn't address airport properties. And frankly, we haven't seen a lot of need for heavy industry in this community. So I've shifted position, and I'm pretty skeptical about the need to retain distinct I-2 units. So coupled that with my paranoia about takings is kind of where I'm coming from when I'm looking at this. I think there should be some distinction that the I-2 standard should be different from I-1. But outright prohibition is a taking to me. So, so if I might. Go ahead. I have not heard a thorough discussion of takings in this group. It's my understanding it is not a taking to rezone and change. Well, so I, would, I would appreciate if, if this is a huge for me consideration, I would appreciate Cheryl, this goes the back. lawyers to come in and do their thing. Well, we have had a thing with the lawyers. I don't, admittedly, it was some time ago. We had a massive work session under Mayor Begich. We had a Fred Bonas do a research on it. And there's been significant work done on it. There is disagreement, I assume, among the lawyers whether or not it is a thing. It is not a done deal with the lawyers. You are correct. Okay. You are correct. Right. 
The other issue that's it's just not on the table <coughs> is the need to concentrate our commercial development. When those little ladies go out to lunch, we want them to walk down to the local shop. We don't want them to have to drive over to McDonald's or whatever. Well, I think that I think that that's true in some parts of town and not necessarily true in other parts of town. It's certainly not in an I two. Well, it's not going to be true in an I two, and so we've just lost the ability for commerce to take place. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you, Tim. Uh, yeah, there's there's at least two sides to that argument, um, but I will agree that as long as the data center part of the financial so you're not branded just by name of business, uh, but it's the actual, it looks at the function of the facility. Um, going into the future, I don't really see any need for a, what we think of as a bank, where people are coming to the door or driving through in the IT district. So you're okay with the prohibition? I'm okay with the prohibition. Any other comments? Jim, I know I, you're not, I'm right? not. Uh, I would want an MRC. Okay. That's what Bruce recommended. As I well. remember. All right. Well, guys, I'm with a C, but I'm I can be C, over. Yeah. You're, you can't do both. <laughs> no, you said C, so I did. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. All right. Are you okay? Well, C would allow it if. Um, if it went through the conditional use process, which is a lot more cumbersome than any public yeah. hearings and mm -hmm. neighborhood input. And it may not be allowed. Right. They can say no. Okay, I'm okay with that. All right, we're going to change it to a C in the I two. I'm sorry, I changed that too quickly. <laughs> Good. Is that uh, with the I C? I can't even find it now. Oh, here it is. All right, and so we're leaving the asterisk in the I one, as I under my understanding. If the uh, the asterisk in the I one. <coughs> The same limit. I think you the idea would be that the I one is generally designed to allow more so commercial you, than I two. So you so want to see with an asterisk? That's what I. Think. Okay, that's all right. With me. Okay, let's see. The next one you've got is general retail, and this is sort of the same situation. The uh, the answer to the riddle is on page seventy five of your blue line <laughs> version for both grocery store and general. Retail. Okay. Not a problem. Uh, okay, so the line you're referencing is grocery or food stores in the I-1 district shall have a maximum gross floor area of 20,000 square feet. And the grocery or food, same. Uh, so the back story is that as provisionally adopted, those stores were not going to be permitted at all in the I-1. Uh, the administration took its look. And wanted to, and, yeah, understood. And the commercial land study also weighed in and said that Okay. There is a place for uh, commercial, some commercial in the I-1. prudent thing would be to leave the commercial out of the I-2. So what we did with the administration amendment was to allow it into yeah. the oh, I-1. Got it. Got that. With that limitation. Okay. First, let's ask about this 20,000 square foot limitation. Any objection to that? I don't know Maybe what that is. That's why I'm not looking at you. I can't yeah. think how big. Sagaya is. Sagaya is. Red apple. Red apple might be bigger than that. I'd say city market. Yeah. So city market would not be allowed, but. No, that's probably. Wait, it right would, be would be allowed. Would be allowed. City market is fifteen thousand. Okay, so little ones are allowed, but uh, like a Safeway cars would not be. The idea being that the Safeway cars we want to see in the. The, the neighborhood the commercial area. centers, the urban okay. centers, not the I. Okay, and you you want it prohibited? Eighty thousand square feet, approximately. Yeah, six sixty. Okay, and you would like it prohibited in the I two. And I probably do this com this conditional use suggestion again, but why would you want a smaller grocery store in an I two? Tom. There are Area. people that work in a grocery, work in an I-2 that would like to buy groceries. They'd like to walk next door to buy groceries so they don't have to drive. 
Well, the zone of where the zero station will get that and gas the and the at the same time. The large, the, the idea behind the limitation is that uh, the idea is that there are limited grocery stores that are going to come into the community, and um, we need to have them at the appropriate locations. The industrial district is not the appropriate location. And, and I, I don't disagree with that. You've got a total different type of traffic circulation associated with general I two use and people going to the grocery store. And if we're going to have grocery stores, let's put them closer to where the people are. Okay. In concentration. All right. So, are we? What, go ahead. Question. I'm surprised how much food uh, is stocked in the uh, Walgreens. They sell so much stuff in there. Is that what is that? At the, uh, is that a grocery store? They call it a general retail. Never been in there. Right. So is that? We're getting it's a, it's a <coughs> same same situation as the grocery here. Yeah. The twenty thousand square foot. Twenty thousand square foot. Okay. Well. Where are we on this, guys? Prohibit or conditional use? I could actually probably even live with prohibit on this one. Objection? Now we lost Ernie, so it's the three of us. Have we lost him permanently? Or just temporarily? Uh, well, I hope he's. No, he's coats here. <laughs> okay. Prohibit or conditional? Prohibit. Prohibit? Harriet? Prohibit small grocery stores? I think they need to be in neighborhoods, not in. That's what they're saying. <coughs> okay, so in I2? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to prohibit in I2. Okay, the next one you've got is visitor accommodation uses. Those are uh, the hostel, hotel, and extended stay. Uh, and those are currently not permitted in the I2, so we thought it would be best to at least not reverse right. direction. The is it what's the seafood place that wants to be by the Red Roof Inn? What's that? Copper River. No, Copper yeah. River. Okay, they wanted to they wanted to have housing for their workers. That's a dormitory. That would be a dormitory, not an extended stay. Okay, would dormitories be allowed? Dormitory for work with I'm reading their list of their, what they wanted to prohibit on this document here. And they wanted to prohibit visitor accommodation uses. And in our chart, we said that visitor accommodation uses are uh, permitted in I-1 and a major site plan review in I-2. So, um, dormitories are an accessory use, and I don't have what PNZ did with the accessory use table, but in the provisionally adopted, they would be a conditional use in the I-1 and not allowed in the I-2. Okay. I don't, I don't know if that area down in the creek is I-1 or I-2. This is another <coughs> one where the people are sleeping and there's just antithetical, it's like oil and water when you have that next to it manufacturing business that's maybe going holy guns well, Sunday morning or in the evening. Unless they're the workers for the place and I, I don't know. Comment? The dormitory. If you have people sleeping, they could be shift workers. I mean, they need to have peace and quiet to sleep. Well, note that there are residences immediately adjacent to heavy yeah. industrial now. And there's always complaints about it. Okay, well, for me, I w when Jennifer and I looked at this, we tried to be congruent with similar things. So the retail, the office, everything that seemed in that category, we tried so to treat the same. Dormitory is a, an accessory use, yeah. and uh, that would be affected by this line. Okay. Um, so... You want it prohibited in I-2. That would work prohibited in I-2. No. All right, we're going to prohibit it in I-2. Okay, then you wanted to change on the A part. You wanted to change conditional use. The Correctional Community Residential Center, which is on the chart, the very first thing on the chart. 
So this is a, it's a, a halfway house for an inmate, right? And I think part of the idea behind it is to help folks reintegrate. Um, right. We prefer they sleep and reintegrate outside the I-2 district. Well, the difficulty with this, and with my rationale on this one, is you can't get these in neighborhoods without people going ballistic. You, residential neighborhood folks hate this with a passion. And so they want to stop them. Yeah, so you got to put them someplace, mm -hmm. and the pressure. I thought I was trying to respond to pressure. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I don't Good. think the staff's considered is that there's a one mile separation requirement. That's right. For these. And if you start taking out, I, I certainly haven't looked at the grid of where everything is now and where any open spots are. It's limited, it's extremely it's limited. limited. We, we looked at it when we did the red roof in thing. And it's really hard. So I don't want to be this prohibitive. I'm a little flexible. I mean, if you don't want to pee there, I'd go with a an S or something. But I don't think we can. We got to let these folks have something. So what is that? Okay, an S and a C. Is that what you're suggesting, yes. Dick? Yeah. Uh, you could have a situation. You know, I don't know what, what the they're, how they're allowed permitted today. It might be a good idea to check. If, for example, you could have an I-1 district right next to that neighborhood, and so you may want the ability to conditionally allow it rather than permit it outright through a S or a P. Uh, in so I you one. want C? You're suggesting CC? Uh, just just to see how they're allowed, they're allowed today. If they're conditionally used in the I-1 district today. Okay, I'll go CC. So, is so that all right? Additional use with a one mile separation, which is hard to find anyway. It's really hard to find, but we gotta do this. Right. So right. we know neighborhoods they don't want them in and then they're told well you can't keep them out because they're yeah. ruling for the ninth circuit court. Yeah, so this is a relief valve. Okay. Government administrative and civic buildings. Um now I think this is probably okay, well, the committee made it prohibited in both. But you want it to be conditional, and I want. I don't know how I came up with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You struck it wrong. <laughs> what? You know, Cheryl, you can't say it for him. He's got to say it. <laughs> I, I think that when we wrote this, I had not realized the committee had taken it out of the. Okay, I I'm fine with it, putting it conditional, and I want if you want. It's probably not consistent with our policies. I was reacting to the yes. I understood. Okay. But I mean Go ahead, Jim. We've got weights and measures in one of Bob's buildings. We've got also I mean government administrative is more is a lot more than City Hall. I mean there's a lot of government administrative buildings spread throughout this town. Well Jim I agree with you but I got overridden in the last committee meeting. If you note, the chart that I did had it for an S. <laughs> One thing we did do is uh, in the business industrial parks, especially, you know, for example, the existing ones where the weights and measures is located, um, those are taken care of separately from this chart. And uh, when you have a government administrative civic building, we prefer it located, you know, again, in those commercial centers. And, uh, I understand. Okay, guys, do we leave it prohibited or do we put a C in I-1? On government. On government. What do you want to do? Last time you said prohibited entirely. I'd be happy to go with a C in I-1. Can you go with a C in I-1? I can. Okay, guys, this, this is the stuff that's supposed to go downtown. No. no. They've been thinking government? about things like the government transit building? center that's coming here. Just a minute. Let's listen to Dick. Go ahead, Dick. Just think about the transit center that's coming here. Uh-huh. They would probably need a conditional use to move it here. Question: Transit center is that a government? Does it in this category? Erica, transit center. We have a transit center use. It's uh, fourth from the bottom. Okay, Dick. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. So, I'm sorry. We're back to the question, and you guys start talking at once, and I didn't hear you. Jim and Cheryl both said something. I think. 
idea. Okay, Cheryl, did you? We're talking about government administrative and civic building. Yeah, and you wanted to know if that wasn't that supposed to be downtown. Yeah, we're, we have and federal rules. We have our own yeah. policy. And hold, hold on a second. We spent some time on that. So, uh, the Eagle River Government Center. It's it's deliberately a satellite center specific to that community. Sure. That would be uh, in a. In a in a commercial center, but not in downtown. So our policy is that the major citywide administrative services are downtown, but we, we have to make room for those satellite offices um, elsewhere. And but those again are preferably commercial centers, not industrial. Yes. Okay, Jim. Government services is a facility housing government shops, maintenance and repair centers, and equipment storage yards, and supporting administrative offices. We don't want those downtown. No, that's what page are you? So government service is a separate use. It's in the okay, third where's page. The where are these applied? It's well, it's it, thirty-seven. Say so again, thirty-seven. Okay. All right, guys. We we basically dealt with this. We prohibited it both, so I don't hear any big cry to change it. So we're still there. All right. The next one is religious assembly. Now. My understanding is there's been court cases, and I spent a whole lot of time on this during the school board, that just prohibits you from discriminating or not allowing churches in areas. So that's my first question. I, my understanding of that legislation, or really the legislation, is that you can't treat churches and other types of religious assemblies different from other similar uses that gather people together, like community centers and schools okay. and things. Yeah. All right. It's not saying you can't. You can't. All right. My second concern is we already have some churches in I one, don't we? Well, that's because we sold it's them in I two. We do have churches, <laughs> which belongs. Not to with I1. my vote, we didn't. <laughs> in I one and I two. Okay. No, so that gave me pause and didn't. I didn't want to directly prohibit what we would previously allowed. So that's why Jennifer and I had allowed them. And I'm trying to find them on the chart, and I can't. Bob, Bob's from last Here. Bob? If you're going to be consistent with what you did with office, you ought to prohibit them. Bob, you're not being helpful. You're disagreeing. The challenge we have is you know, the, many of the newer churches are, are uh, there's no mega church in Anchorage, but there's big churches, and they take they take the same amount of land. I know, I know, but a lot of I'm not thinking of that church. The industrial areas are really to kind of interim locations for them there. But there's also churches that go in really weird places to address a specific clientele need, like a church that would be kind of a soup kitchen for street people or a specific outreach to street people. So if you've got like a homeless shelter or something, then right. you, wanna you could have a church, you know, a small church leasing an industrial warehouse space, and that's current. You could. But right. on the other, oh, sorry. No, I was just listening to Harriet. Go ahead. So, by and similar to office, there there are offices, and then there's offices, and there's little churches, and then there's the churches, and perhaps uh, some kind of size limit or other type of limitation would be appropriate. Harriet, I, did I cut you off? No, no. I uh, think um, right now we've got it as PP, and they want it as conditional, conditional in I1 and prohibited in I2. Folks, I would think conflicting uses would be your worst fear. It goes right in next to a I mean, well, busy place or parking issues coming up. Or I can just think of. Well, you certainly don't. The neighborhood, you know, Methodist church that appeals to a certain clientele probably won't choose there. But I don't. I could think that niche churches would. <laughs> you can disagree with me, Bob. I was teasing. <laughs> in uh, in the in the Huffman Business Park, which is currently in I one. We have churches all the time. It's, it's churches that don't have enough money to have their own building. It's churches that are building a new building, so they need an interim location. Mm -hmm. And parking-wise, it works out really well, because on Sundays, there's plenty of parking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess I'd have to agree with that, that you would have, there's a place for that, that type of church 
I think that the, our concern is the big churches Understood. that erode the district. Understood. Do you want to come think about some language? And we can hold this with the discussion on offices for when we have a full committee? Yes, please. All right, so we're going to hold this one, too. Yeah. Museum or Jim? Can you can we back up for one second? Only if it's a limited backup. Government administration and civic buildings are an office of government agency or foreign government that provides administrative, such as employment offices, public assistance offices, motor vehicle licensing, and registration. Yes, sir. The priority location for major federal street and muni buildings is in the central business district. Yep. But these these out we just moved all these other ones downtown. They no longer can be out where the people are. No, we didn't. We dealt because they're I one. Okay. We dealt with this right. issue um, some meetings ago. Okay. And we all agreed on language for the location that we just added a phrase, I don't know, what did we say, where appropriate or something like that. So we're not changing that. Okay. All okay. Right. Thank you. Museum. Okay. What did we do? Where is museum? First page. First page. Middle of first page. Middle of. There it is. Okay. They would like it conditional in I-1 and prohibited in I-2. And um, the reason we did this one is Museum of Flight or a military museum where you'd have tanks or something like that. That was why we did that, not the, you know, the Anchorage Museum. Right. But a specific industrial use museum. Right. So that's that Museum of Flight, I think it's owned I-1. Okay. So it's in an industrial district, that's true. Uh, so when we looked at that, we looked at the fact that um, it's in the airport and it won't be affected by any of this because the airport will, will short term will fall under current Title 21, so it's exempt. And in the long term, the intent here is to create an airport district and the airport district uh, won't be affected by this. So. <clears throat> I, I doubt that a museum of any other type would want to locate at the airport or in an industrial zone. I mean, it'd have to be pretty um, area specific, like you said, tanks and so on. So how would you how would you allow that? Well, the, I guess the the I one district it would be conditionally allowed, and then those areas remaining I two we would prefer they locate elsewhere. Okay, CN, CN prohibited? All right, we're going to change it from MC to C prohibited. Okay, correctional institution is the last one they wanted to talk about, which is where? The very top, I think. No, that's yeah. residential. These are jails we're talking about now. Two thirds of the way down. Okay, this well, one threw me. Why would you not want a jail in industrial? Uh, we want, I'm oh, sorry. He made a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, ask a lot of She made another joke, and we're not going to go in either way. <laughs> All right. I, this is why we did it, is because nobody wants to have a jail by them. So put them down so away, don't. you know. So, but they do need oversight. That's why the MC. The, uh, in the, I think in the I-2, we're really looking at a limited area. We want to conserve it for our key driver base industries. Okay, uh, I understand. A prison but wasn't in our Where are you going to put a prison? I mean. Well, the, I mean, the current prison is zone PLI. You're going to put it just in PLI? That's the only place you can have a prison? Well, and in, 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 in the I-1. What about private that, yeah. That's the thing. A lot of communities are looking at private facilities as an industry and and a way to uh, create jobs and all kinds of things. So I don't think we're looking at just a public facility. And, and you know, I would think that you'd want a measure of test to make sure that it's compatible. So make it a conditional use. Okay, what they're suggesting is conditional I-1, prohibited I-2. 
And what Jennifer and I did is major site plan review I1, conditional I2. Go ahead. If you make it a major site plan review, there's nobody who can say no to that use going in that location. That only looks at the design. So if you want there to be Okay, a, I'll go with so I'll go with C C. Can we do C C? C C Okay. All right. So at this point, does anybody have anything else on the charts they want to talk about? Tim. Yeah. Well, where did we end up on retail in I2? Good point. Where did we end up with is, retail? Is there, a, is there a bakery that might have a retail outlet as kind of a front shop? Could, that would fall under either yeah. a food store or a general, or excuse me, either food store or a restaurant, depending on. Okay, really? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> and you'll make sure that the code enforcement people here or zoning plan review know that? I won't. Hopefully, I won't need to. Hopefully, our, our well, it'll be, it's in the definitions is where yeah. it'll be. So. And then, uh, wait, wait, then, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. So, a commercial Disney. bakery is retail? Well, there's, there's three things going on there. If it's commercial food production, that's extra separate use type, commercial food production. If it's uh, if it's more of a coffee shop type of situation, okay. it's, it's How a about restaurant. Wonder Bread. Uh, what's what's your Sunrise? sunrise. sunrise. Yeah. That's oral wheat that we've done. That would be manufacturing. So Sunrise would have to be an I1. Or commercial food production, I'm sorry. So commercial food production is an industrial use. It's a use type. And uh, it is. In other words, it's not general retail or you know grocery store. Yeah, or something the, the, like that. the retail well, is uh, a very small piece of that. Yeah, the three areas. Or yeah, exactly. but do you, you have a, oh, about a that component of that, that facility like Sunrise? Could it can it be a retail yeah. front door? So, so they um, do wholesale distribution, but they also have. A that's right, and, and the way that the code is structured is. You know, whether maybe you're a lighting supply warehouse like Crescent Lighting Supply, well, you can have a portion of that be uh, a retail. So you have that function built into your industrial business. Uh, that's in the uh, industrial category overall discussion. And that's defined someplace? Yeah. Uh, Eric is the definition if, if guru. If it's so. defined, that's okay. The, the other one I have from a use standpoint is that. Could, could you wait on that one sure. minute? Dick had a question about. I've got an Earl Wheat distribution on Lake Otis. The bread is trucked in, and they've got a retail sale there. It's right next to a, a, a dry cleaning place. Right. They sell the Drips. blood out of dry the bread out of dry cleaning place. Store right next to them. Oh. Okay. So, like, for example, under industrial service category, accessory activities may include retail services, office, storage. Um, uh, manufacturing and production. These are the overall definitions for all these industrial uses. Accessory activities may include limited retail sales, offices, what have you. Um, the first use type under manufacturing and production is commercial food production. So I would assume that your uh, baker, uh, Sunrise would fall under that. And then uh, warehouse and storage. This is the third major category uh, involved here under retail. You have a variety of warehouse use types under this definition. Uh, and uh, with a, 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 an amendment brought forward by the administration and approved by the commission, accessory uses may include offices, limited retail sales, truck fleet, parking, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is that these are industrial uses. Uh, we recognize that many industrial uses have a, a minor retail component. Yeah. Okay. Dick, and you, okay. Tim? Um, I had I had two other uses that I wanted to ask about. The first one I'll ask about, where does the furniture store go? The we have them all. in B3 and we also have them in I1. Right. Tree forms on old sewer is in I1. I'm looking for it now. It is a use type. Uh, I'll stop it down your shoulder and get my own. So if it's strictly a furniture store, 
bear with me here. I'm looking for it. What did you decide on the, the commercial the acreage? General, general retail. retail. Page 74. Uh, we have, we have, it, it is a separate use type because of very different parking requirements, uh, Jim, so I'm looking for that use type. It says home premises. Yeah, and, and we've carefully delineated that away from the, uh, the, the furniture carpet store. Um, what if Ikea wanted to open a store here? So with Bob's help. Uh, okay, I, yeah, we're going to try to clarify this one and then we're going to go back to the other list. question. Erica, can you help? Yes, I remember they're moved on it. Pardon me, 70, it's in red on 74. Somebody just remind me of red. Right here. Red is an administration amendment, but it didn't make it into the table. Page 30, line 33, page 74. Okay, so we'll need to add that. And one of the things that they are going to do is add the uses that are in the narrative into the table. Yeah. So the idea, there were several reasons why that was separated out. And one of them is has very different parking requirements. The other reason is that it is a use that is more appropriately located in an industrial zone than, say, a Walmart. So it doesn't fall in their general retail. It's its own use. So you can get your cart. Okay, so what are you going to do with it when you put it in the table for I-1? Well, I would, there's very de degrees of permitting it, and that would be our intent. I don't remember what so we... So you're going to asterisk it? Well, what... <laughs> Double asterisk it. <laughs> Sorry. What do I... we recommend with the administration? Let me see. I'll just tell you what we recommended in 2011 right now. <laughs> This is after the administration looked at it. What we had to do was size, but I feel like I need to get a gas <laughs> Okay. Okay, so here we go. Uh, there are the administration amendments, Amendment 39, uh, along with adding the use. In, in the table, add this use and allow it by a P in the B3. And the I-1 districts. Okay. It's silent on the I-2. All right. Which means it's prohibited. Any objection to that? No. Okay, we like that. Okay. Harriet, you had a question um, back on the bakery thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what decision we made. Because the, um, you can refer to the Sunrise Bakery as what a commercial bakery looks like, but it absolutely doesn't belong in that neighborhood. There's conflicts all the time. So, but that that would be appropriate in an, an I-1 or an I-2, I believe. And commercial food production is permitted in both. Okay. To our and then they and they can have a small retail component for Dale bread or whatever, or they can yeah. put it somewhere else. In fact, that what's going on there on Spinard Road with their little retail? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. It's that's very minor. It's a that's minor part of yeah, what they do. That's okay. Right. Yeah. The the other thing I see now, and I apologize, I didn't catch this earlier. They wanted. Staff would like to change um, the uh, for retail. They want to change. We had is it M and I two, and they wanted a C and I two, which would be in line with things other things we've done. So I'm okay with it, I guess. I'm looking at your item C, three C. I thought I'd been through all this, but I hadn't read it thoroughly. And you're recommending to change the commercial uses shown as M to C. And so by commercial uses, maybe you should delineate. I, I locked, saw the retail and pet services as the commercial. So you want all the commercial? Everyone? Is that what you're recommending? On that page, the one's listed as M uh, recommended to change to C, yes. All three pages? Uh, no, the second page is commercial. Okay. So they're recommending everything on the second page that shows as M, they want to see. That we haven't already talked about. Oh, yeah. For example, a shooting range outdoor, um, just looking at that, an M really looks at its design. And I think what, you know, if it's locating in an I-2, the question is, where is it in the I-2? Is it next to the neighborhood? We don't care, you know. How, what it looks like in an I-2 well, district. Well, can't you, on a major site plan <clears throat> review, talk about placement and buffering? 
we can talk about buffering. We can't talk about placement. It's permitted. All right. Well, our thinking was if there's anything you want far away from people, it's a shooting range. So why not put it on I-2 where you've got the stringent buffering requirements? So I Right. But what did, did I just hear that uh, a master site plan review doesn't allow anybody to object to it? No, there's a public hearing with a major site plan review. We can talk well, about the, the design. The wait, 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 one at a time. Yeah, you know, the issues are design related when it's a, when it's a major site plan or a site okay. plan. Okay, good the point. The issue of conditional use is that I it's, know. A, it's an allowed use, but you have to prove that you can make it compatible with the surrounding area. So you can't get denied. Okay, is that what you want to say? the commission could find right. that it's not compatible with the surrounding area, so they can decide that you can't go there. Okay, why don't, why don't we do it this way? Everybody look at page two. Look at the list of M's. Is there any M here that you think should not go to C? Because they're going to say they're going to say that every M except the ones we've already talked about would go change to C. So There's that only one. Pardon me. There's only one. Is that correct? No. no. Okay. There's just I two. So there's retail pet services. There's veterinary clinic. There's entertainment facility major. No, that's already a C. There's general outdoor recreation commercial. There's shooting range outdoor. There's broadcast facility. There's business service establishment, small equipment rental. Farmer's market, general retail. We already took that out. No, we didn't. I have to cross out. I think we discussed it. I we what didn't you make did. a decision. I only wrote down grocery store on my chart, but okay. I don't thought we did grocery store. Well, let's let's talk about the M's first. Is there anything there that you think should not switch to C? Well, Bob, Cheryl, go ahead. Well, up on retail and pet services, uh, I don't think belongs over in the industrial section. But again, you've got mom and pop coming in with the kids, and it, it doesn't belong in an industrial zone. Okay. All right. Anything from anybody else? Okay. Does that line refer to just pet services, retail and? Pet okay. We services. need a definition for means. retail and pet services, Erica. I just turned to her because Page she's quick at it. Page 62, line 34. Establishment primarily engaged in sale, bathing and or grooming of domestic animals, excluding exotic animals. Accessory uses may include overnight stays, incidental primary care. Okay. Harriet, is that? Okay. Are we okay with the making that a C? Which, which classification is um, a pet hotel? It's a commercial kennel. You mean like doggy daycares? That's a hotel and it's prohibited. No levity allowed. <laughs> okay. Well, Madam Chair, I'm asking that the uh, C for the, uh, you take it into a P there. No, we're looking at the I two M's is what we're looking at right now. Well, I well one thing at a time. All right, I'm not hearing any objection from anybody. Okay, we're going to change all the C's, all the M's to C's. Thank you for listening when I'm talking incorrectly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, yeah, farmers market. You know, transitory. They're gonna yeah. see transit, temporary and seasonal. I'm not sure. That's a big why it should hurting. just be permitted. Yeah, they're not gonna go where. <clears throat> The market is not. It's one or two days a week, mostly in the summertime. You know, mostly on a weekend. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do we need a conditional use for that? We, I, I don't think. 
<clears throat> okay. I just go with yeah, I could yeah, really talk about some of what happened this summertime. Okay, so order. go to, go to farmers market, erase that C you just wrote, and put a P. Yes. You guys, you're, you're wasting your retail trade. Okay. Well, at the moment, that's where we are. Go ahead. There's a great one in South Anchorage that I'm sure many of you are familiar with in the parking lot outside the subway arena. There's now um, retail across the street. There's a coffee shop and a cheese store and a fire tap um, and a yogurt store. It's this great synergy, and my partner and I go down there a lot on Saturday morning. And people are walking between these two things, the farmer's market and the fire tap uh, cheese store area, and there's no sidewalks, and it's a really, really difficult situation. So I just wanted to point that out as a place where sidewalks are really, really needed when you might not have anticipated that when the, you know, when the first went in. So. Parking lots, I've always said, you've heard me say it, whenever you get out of your car, you become a, you become a pedestrian. Parking lots. Okay. Should always have sidewalks. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the validity of it. I'm Find just going to say it's out of place. Trail. Okay, it's People out of walk. place right now. All right, farmer's market, we're PP. General retail, then we're PC. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Are we PC? So under the 3B, it was one of the things you discussed. Uh, I thought you discussed it along with... The Did we? I'm sorry, I just so didn't write it down. Because they had the same asterisk. We were discussing the asterisk, and I thought you made the same decision for both of those. What did we decide for grocery? Was that we were taking it out for grocery? But I just remember the grocery. I don't remember the general retail discussion. So it might, I'm, a, I'm a miss. I probably didn't, a remiss. I wrote a belt down and out. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Right into, what did we do with the asterisk though? And I won. They remain. Um, wait a minute for retail. We that didn't was, talk about it. No, no, that was a 20,000 square foot limitation. Mm -hmm. Guys? And we talked about how the um, city market would be okay. Yeah. See, the confusion for me, Erica, is I concentrated on that whole discussion as grocery. So in my mind, it didn't, and I should have made it a more thorough discussion. Um, do you want to talk about the asterisk on general retail for I-1? We can hold it until Jennifer's here for that other asterisk discussion. Okay, so I've got three hold issues for when we have a full committee on this table. It's the, the three hold issues are the asterisks on office and general retail and the churches. Okay. But other than that, we're done, right? Is it unless somebody has some other use they want to talk about, and do we? Land aside. Pardon me. Land aside. Okay, it's land aside. All right. Um, I do have something on Chapter Seven sorry, uses. I'm sorry. Cheryl. I'm concerned about movie theaters going into industrial land. They used to get conditional use on I one, and now they're only a site center. By life, right? Yeah. Again, well, to me, okay. The reason I did this, Jennifer and I did this, is because of all the others permitted. If you've got a commercial allowed, and you've got a nightclub allowed, and you've got all this other allowed, why does a movie theater require conditional? So I put and we put an S because then it still has some site plan review. I just tried for con no, that's the right word. Similarity, congruity of use. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that was the only rationale there. No. I'm not hearing any objection. Okay, I hear you. Yeah, we would prefer that the movie theaters locate in those commercial centers and and, and not bring those draws into the industrial zones. I think that was the purpose behind the C. Okay, in the I well, it didn't come up. It wasn't on your chart, but I guess, does anybody want to change movie theaters in committee? I think what you're going to see is the marketplace is going to handle that issue. I agree. All right, I'm not hearing anything from anybody. So let's go through the use, the purpose statements on Chapter 7. If you remember, PNZ took them all out. 
and I'm going to suggest we retain some of them. Um, page one of the red line, blue line. And this will be the last topic for today, unless Tom has something. I do not. Okay. Well, we did it last time. So if there's a, a move to revisit that, I haven't yet heard it from anybody. Jennifer may, but right now she's not here. I think there was last time some discussion of since you had left of letting him look at what you I done. did. We did get his email, but I'm going to re refer defer it to Jennifer. She's the one, only one who's responded so far, and she's not here. And I I hesitate to speak for people. I really do. All right. What I'm going to suggest is keeping one, two. Six and seven. Okay, I'm sorry, Debbie, where are you? Page, please. It's the very beginning, it's page one. So give me those numbers again. I'm going to suggest keeping one, two, six, and seven. We, uh, we, we also got Jim's email and, and the the key items that we believe uh, broadly represent a lot of what's in the chapter. Oh, which ones? Set, uh, excuse me, 9, 10, and 11. Uh, elements right. of let's, 9. Okay, hold on. Let's read all them. Of 10 and 11. Let's look at 9. <clears throat> okay, I'm all right with 9. Mm -hmm. Keep 9. Okay, what's the next one? 10. To encourage developments that relate to adjoining. Sally or Jim, do you remember what the problem? Well, the ones we recommended keeping seem to be speak to standards. And that's where we kept those. Uh, you you read the comments of quite a few of the other commissioners on this thing. Okay, I do, but let's just look at ten right now, please. Nothing else. So the concern. Do I'm sorry. List of things they recommend? Yeah, he recommended one, two, six, and seven. The. I think the, the concern that I had heard with this was about the connectivity um, scale, which we seem to be, it was confusing and I think there's a general sense that we would try to clarify the connectivity um, maps and the index. And the um, orientation, well we do have open spaces physical connection, the connectivity on the, the, really the sidewalk, crazy. just a second, the sidewalk with the shortest distance to the street issue. I think those were the two things that I heard that caused some concern with 10. Now, Sally? Well, I was just going to say 10 is very confusing um, surrounding network of streets. I mean, that, I that's the connectivity which the assembly has wrestled with and we did in the building code, we wrestle with that. Erica. I'm sorry, I, I disagree that this is about connectivity. We have a network of streets, walkways, pathways, and trails right now, and, and all this is saying is that we're trying to connect to the, our existing network, not it. Connectivity is actually addressed in the low 11. Well, I think that people, part of the frustration is that people read these differently, you know, and you, all, you read it, and you've got your background and orientation into what the language says when you read it. So I don't. Okay, I see why you say eleven. Thank you. Um, on the orientation issue, um, and any lack of clarity in language is probably, at least partly, my own fault. But the idea, some of the pictures we showed, for example, the one with the dumpster there on 82nd, or these, basically, we're 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 trying to get. A lot of the development, excuse me, a lot of the standards in Chapter 7 speak to how the building fronts on the street or the development. Uh, okay. It's, and and well, it really connects yeah. to the comp plan and, and a lot of the standards. What would be most helpful it. is if we can <clears throat> think of specific examples that are in the document that are illustrated by the purpose statement. Okay. 
And uh, the point you made is, is one. That, that certainly is one. So I guess I could go with keeping 10 unless you can give me a specific example besides confusion. <laughs> I don't know what it adds, Debbie. I try to read these things, and, and you've said before that words, words matter. And if it added something, I could see keeping it. Well, if it didn't add anything, and I don't see 10 adding anything except confusion. Okay. The general, the way I read purpose statements is it gives you a general framework of what you're going to get when you read the, the rest of the stuff. So that's why I said if there's specifics in there that buffer or implement this purpose statement, then there's value in the purpose statement. So, so what are we doing? Well, I do think that there are some specifics, but I do have some problem with the wording, which is why I initially agreed to get rid of it. But there are specifics in the document that do point to the physical connections on to the surrounding that do point that have specific requirements for pathways that have specific requirements for at least the private open space so I I don't see this as being a big big problem but if you show me something that I'm missing I could go with you I don't know what it says I think if you talk to Joe Paul on the street they would be confused by it Okay. That's why I'm going to have to clarify it again. I understand. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, okay, then I'm going to suggest right now, unless somebody overrides me or you guys disagree, is we go with 10 but don't go with 11. Is that all right? Hearing no, no one. Wait. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Harriet. We're not talking about transit here. We are this talking about pedestrian. Model. Just a minute. We are in here. There's specific language that talks about pedestrian. But not multimodal uh, transit. Well, there, I don't remember. Well, we do say pathways to bus stops. That's the only thing I remember. There's some parking reductions related to transit facilities and that kind of encouragement. Okay. The, the connectivity index is originally presented as problematic. And the assembly spent a fair amount of time in the building, in the Title 23 discussion, drawing back from the connectivity standards that the fire department was trying to implement. So I don't, I'm, my, I'm trying to reflect the assembly's position. Since we threw out protecting public health and safety somewhere, there's a lot of this stuff we don't need, right? <laughs> I mean, really, if the fire department needs connectivity, I think you ought to pay attention. Okay. Well, right. I need you guys to say yay or nay. And these are our design and development standards. So multimodal connectivity is right up there. Okay. We are shifting the city. All right. Well, well I want to repeat my understanding is we're not getting rid of anything that's a law. That's, we're talking about generally an intense statement of what the law will show. So, I mean, I'm somewhat flexible here, but. I've already circled it. You've already circled it? Okay. So, Ernie's okay with keeping 10, getting rid of 11? Dick? Yeah. And, okay. So, keep 10, get rid of 11. So, we're keeping 1, 2, 6, 7, Nine ten. All right. Thank you very much, Harriet. Um, and why are we um, allowing three, four, and five to go away? Why aren't we protecting public and private investment? The <laughs> we'll go to delete all of them. Then I mean, seriously, purpose statements don't have the weight of law. Why do we even have them? That's PNZ's position. My position has been somewhat more temperate. Maybe that's not the right word, but I think that purpose statements do serve some value in that they give the user a general statement of what to ex they expect to see as they read further in the chapter. 
Okay, yeah. Let's just wait then. If you can go ahead and look if there's anything specific you want to add. But considering this was going to be a short meeting, <laughs> it didn't turn very short. So at this point, we'll keep it, but certainly if you want to add something back next meeting, I'm not including that. Okay? Jennifer, I expect to be here next meeting. We are meeting on the 11th. And this time we'll believe you. Okay. <laughs> I know it changed. Um, we'll be then in the in the big room, and at that point, our general will finish this up. We're going to see some language next time <coughs> to implement our general understandings, and I'm going to ask that we get that in advance so we can have a chance to read through it. And then if there's any outstanding issues you find that we've missed, Tom, you're certainly free to bring that to the committee at there are approximately 11. 10. About 10 more issues? Unresolved issues. Okay. I'll do it. Give okay, you let's have. talk before. All right, seeing nothing else? I mentioned. I Go have ahead, definitions in Chapter 14 penciled in. We need to see October those. 11. Oh, are we going to do that too then? Uh, we we don't have anything in 14 Okay, ourselves. the committee needs to at least look at it. So if you could just give us 14 and we'll we'll try to read through it. Okay. Oh. And you already have a 14, right, Gary? Okay, mm -hmm. we'll read through it. You, and you all have copies of 14? That's what I was asking. Thank she you, does. I think you do. But we can we have more copies we can break out real quick. Okay. okay, so we're going to finish this up. The, the issues we didn't finish today, we're going to see final language, we're going to see some list of unresolved issues, which I'm unclear. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to at least glance at Chapter 14, which is the definition. It depends on when Terry and Dave have a draft. Do you know the status of that, Jerry? Yeah, Are they're there? pretty close to finalizing. I just saw something from Dave Tremont. Good. Well, I assume that's one of the unresolved issues that we're going to be talking about. We intend to provide you with a document in advance providing you with all the material on the unresolved issues, including landscaping. Okay. So. If at all possible, if you could get us hard copies by the assembly meeting, it's really nice. That, that, that. We are going to be there on the assembly meeting, so you can grab all of us. Go ahead. What about the big gorilla on the order of precedence? Where are we on that? Wait a minute. Defi the big gorilla on the order. Well, which document takes precedence over what? That language. The conflict with the. Conflict. All right. I sent to Sally. That's next week too. Okay. I sent to Sally Dennis's proposed changes as a result of hearing your discussion, and I asked her, and I unfairly put that on you, Sally. I apologize to circulate that to see if anybody had any additional comments or concerns. It's so she's got that. You've seen it too, I'm assuming? I haven't seen it. Is this something new? Oh, he just sent it to me? No, it's basically staffs. He took, he took your, you guys said you liked chapter okay. one. Right. He took your right. chapter one, and frankly, I read it last week. You know. So I will, let's, when we talk, I will make sure you've got, because then I sent it to her and said, does this reflect? Yeah, I think because I assume it was your stuff. I think we're resolved, but we just need to see what was said. Okay, I will, I will make sure that happens. What, or he what happened sure. is you asked Dennis as a takeaway to look, you asked me to take the staff recommended language back to the commission, which I circulated uh, and emailed my, to all the commission members, including you, Jim, and said we want, I wanted comments back, but I said it would be for next week. You asked Dennis to take that back and look at the legality if he was okay with that. And Dennis responded that yes, he was fine with it. Okay. All right. All right. So we're getting closer, but I want to give everybody a final opportunity. All right. So yes, that's coming too. And we are done. Thank you. <laughs> See you next week.